Today we're going to put a cantilevered beam on a shaker table, hit it with 15 G's and see how it responds. We're going to use Nastran Solution 402 to do this. So we'll begin by creating our simulation files. And our Solution 402. And here we'll select Material Nonlinearity. because we're going to be using a nonlinear material and we'll also specify some damping. Next we'll create a nonlinear dynamic subcase with an end time which will be roughly two or three cycles of our first mode frequency and we'll also specify 50 steps. Now I forgot to specify structural output requests, so let's go back and revisit that. Now there's several here that I don't need, such as force and grid point force and SPC force. So we'll turn all of those off, but I do want to add strain and plastic strain. All right, so that looks good. Next, we'll go to the FEM. We'll put a brick mesh on the part. Here, I'll make sure that we've got at least two elements through the thickness. And we're inheriting the nonlinear material that was specified in the CAD part so we don't have to specify a material. And that nonlinear material had a stress strain curve associated with it. All right, next we'll specify an enforced displacement which will be on the cantilevered end of the beam, or the fixed end of the beam, that will be fixed to the shaker table. And because these are solid elements, we don't need to put in our rotational degrees of freedom. But we're going to be moving it in DOF2, which is the Y direction. So here we're going to specify a formula field that will characterize the movement as a cosine function. And we'll specify the minimum and maximum bounds to evaluate that function and the number of points that we'd like to use to evaluate it. Next we'll put in a magnitude which will be equal to 15 G's and we'll use the formula uh, using the acceleration times 2 pi times the frequency squared to come up with a value of 0 0.0653 and then we'll multiply uh, the cosine of time times our first mode frequency of 47.4 times 360 and then we'll subtract off that magnitude so that we'll be starting our cosine function at zero. All right, so now we're ready to run and I'll pause the video while the solution is running but you can see the total elapsed time in the bottom right is just a little over a minute. And then we can check our results. We'll begin by looking at our displacement results in the Y direction. And here we can animate those results. And we'll animate cross iterations. And you can see the excitation is amplified out at the end of the beam since it's occurring at its natural frequency. We can see that maybe a little bit better if we plot the results and here what we'll do is we'll select one node on the end of the beam that's fixed to the shaker table and another out at the end of the beam. Here we can plot those two points and you can see that amplification quite a bit better.